Welcome back to Quick Films. Today, I'm going to explain an American supernatural horror movie called Dead Silence, released in the year 2007. Spoilers ahead. Remember to like the video and subscribe. The movie begins with a legend from the 6th century, which said that the spirit of the dead spoke through the stomach region of the living. The word ventriloquist came from the Latin word venter, which means belly, and loki, which means to speak. After a montage of creepy doll-making processes, the movie cuts to a man named Jamie fixing the pipes in his kitchen sink. Jamie's been at it for more than an hour, so his wife Lisa suggests getting takeout. Just as Jamie concedes, the doorbell rings. It's a large anonymous package in the mail addressed to Jamie. To find out who it's from, they open it and find a ventriloquist doll inside. It reminds Lisa about a poem from her childhood about an old woman who had all these dolls. Beware of the stare of Mary Shaw. She had no children, only dolls. If you ever see her in your dreams, be sure you never, ever scream. Later on, after Jamie leaves the residence to get some Chinese food for dinner, Lisa puts on some music and gets dressed for her man as it rains heavily outside. However, all of a sudden, Lisa hears everything get dead silent before she starts to hear voices come from the room where she left the doll. She nervously creeps into the room and pulls back the sheet that she had used to cover up the doll. As soon as she removes the cover, Lisa is thrown out of the room like a rag doll by an invisible force. She starts vomiting blood and is dragged back into the room by the same force as she screams in horror. When Jamie returns home with dinner, he finds blood all over his apartment. Lisa calls out for him from the other room, saying that she has a surprise waiting for him. Jamie nervously ventures into the bedroom and finds Lisa's lifeless body. Her body has been turned into a doll and her tongue has been removed, while the creepy ventriloquist doll is lying on the ground by the bed. Later, Jamie, who is the prime suspect in his wife's murder, gets interrogated by Detective Lipton. Lipton believes that Jamie didn't kill his wife and suggests that he find a strong alibi because he was the last person to see her alive and there's no signs of forced entry into the apartment. Jamie maintains that he's innocent and finds it odd that he received a ventriloquist dummy right before Lisa was brutally eliminated. In Jamie's hometown, Raven's Fair, it's believed that a ventriloquist dummy is a bad omen and it's believed that a dummy brings death to those around them. Lipton lets Jamie go for now, and the latter returns home to look for clues. He finds a clue in the box that leads him to his hometown, also the hometown of the murdered ventriloquist, Mary Shaw. He drives to the town with the dummy to meet his rich father Edward and his new young bride, Ella. It's revealed that Jamie does not have a good relationship with Ed because he drove Jamie's mother to end her own life. However, Ed claims that he's remorseful and that he's changed since he suffered from a life-threatening stroke. After learning about Lisa's death, Ed offers to call a family coroner named Henry Walker to make arrangements for the funeral. Jamie declines the offer and asks Ed about the Mary Shaw poem instead, linking it to Lisa's murder. However, Ed brushes his concerns aside, calling it small-minded superstition. Afterwards, Jamie visits the coroner's office. There, he meets Henry and his strange wife, Marion, who is talking to herself on the porch. Later, Jamie finds himself hearing strange voices in his hotel room. Back at the coroner's office, Henry receives the body of Lisa. Henry is shocked by the state of the body. He's then distracted by his wife, Marion, who is hiding in a dark hiding space, mumbling, she is here, I know it. Henry comforts Marion and sends her back to her room. At Lisa's funeral, Marion approaches Jamie and tries to warn him of the curse of the stare of Mary Shaw. Henry quickly finds her and escorts her away, but not before she advises Jamie to bury the doll. At the cemetery, Jamie also finds the grave of Mary Shaw which has been covered with leaves and sticks. Jamie then returns to the hotel and finds the name Billy on the back of the doll. He immediately gets in a car with the doll and brings it to the cemetery. After a few minutes of searching, he finds a headstone with Billy on it and starts digging. He pulls out the casket, only to find it empty. He throws the doll inside, who looks right at him, and then buries it. In his car, Jamie starts to hear noises and seeing shadows of something running. When he sees the doll looking at him through the window, he decides to get out and look, but the doll disappears. Back in his hotel room, Jamie finds two surprises. The doll and Officer Jim Lipton are there. The officer calls Jamie out for leaving the city despite being asked not to, and also asks him about the doll. Jamie, in return, asks him about the nursery rhyme associated with Mary Shaw and how she was buried with her dolls. This conversation topic bores Lipton, though, and he leaves, taking the doll with him. It turns out that Lipton has booked the room next to Jamie's in the same motel, the next day, after Lipton leaves the motel room to run some errands, Jamie gets the doll back 
and heads over to Henry and Marion's house to talk to them. Henry's afraid of the doll, but Jamie forces him to tell him about the story behind it. A flashback reveals that one day, Mary Shaw, a ventriloquist, got into an argument with a child named Michael during one of her shows. Michael doubted her abilities in front of the audience. After the incident, Michael went missing, and shortly afterwards, Mary also died. At her funeral, Mary was turned into a dummy and buried with her 101 dolls as per her wish. Henry's father was Mary's coroner when he was a child. Before she was buried, a young Henry sneaked into his father's office to look at Mary's corpse. He ended up knocking the table over, sending himself and Mary to the ground. When he collected himself, he saw Mary's ghost, but covered his mouth so as not to scream. Back in the present day, Henry shows Jamie pictures of a bunch of townsfolk, all eliminated by having their tongues removed. Jamie heads over to the old, run-down theater where Mary used to perform, while Lipton starts digging up graves at the cemetery. Jamie finds some more clues leading him to believe that the haunting is true. Meanwhile, at Henry and Marion's house, Henry walks in on Marion talking to Billy, the doll. Henry then takes the doll from his wife and puts it in his office. Suddenly, Henry starts to hear things and grabs a shovel. He thinks it's Marion and apologizes to her. He then goes to look in Marion's hiding space, only to get locked in. After pounding on the door for a bit, he realizes that he isn't alone. He sees Mary's ghost, screams, and then is eliminated in the same fashion as all the others. In the next scene, Jamie goes back to question his dad. He finds out that when his uncle, Michael, the little boy from the flashback that was arguing with Mary, went missing, the Ashen family thought it was Mary that took him. They went to Mary, made her scream, and then cut her tongue out. Jamie then realizes that he could also be a victim since Mary seems to be killing everyone involved with her murder and their offspring. About this time, Lipton shows up and starts questioning Jamie again. He's interrupted when Jamie gets a call from the recently deceased Henry telling him to meet him at the theater. When Lipton refuses to let him go and talk to Henry, Jamie pushes him and runs away. Jamie then drives to the theater and Lipton closely follows him. However, Lipton is stalled when he has to find a boat to cross the river. Inside the theater, Jamie keeps hearing Henry's voice guiding him to him. He comes up to the room where he had heard the voices. Just then, Lipton walks in with a shotgun to apprehend Jamie, but Henry registers his presence by calling out for Jamie again. Now, both Jamie and Lipton both start following the voices into a room where they find all of the dolls of Mary Shaw in cases, with one empty case labeled Billy. They also find the corpse of Michael, who has been made to look like a doll. It turns out that Mary Shaw did kill the boy. Suddenly, it gets very silent, and the dolls in the cases start to move all on their own. They all look to their left, where the scene shows what looks like another doll in the rocking chair. Jamie says the name Mary Shaw twice, and the doll stops rocking. Jamie starts talking to this doll, who is talking as if it's Mary Shaw herself. Jamie asks her about Lisa, and the doll tells him to come closer so she can whisper it to him. As it starts whispering, it sticks out a tongue, and the scene shows Mary behind the doll, sticking her snake-like tongue through the doll. With his shotgun, Lipton blows the doll away, and starts to shoot the other dolls once he realizes that Mary is living through the dolls. A fire erupts, and Jamie and Lipton make a run for it. However, as they run, the girder they're running on falls, and Lipton falls down too and starts to scream. He seems to be momentarily saved by the ghost, only to have his tongue removed and killed like the others. Jamie sees the ghost and covers his mouth just in time as he falls through the floor and into the flooded basement of the theater. He swims out and ends up on the other side of the lake as the theater burns down. He gets in his car and then remembers the missing doll, Billy. He then speeds off and heads back to Henry's house to look for the dummy. He hears Marion crying and finds her holding Henry's corpse. When he questions her about the doll, she claims that his father came and took the doll. Puzzled, Jamie rushes off to his father's house to find it. He goes in and heads upstairs and it gets dead silent again. He then hears someone say, Why did you bury me, Jamie? I'm here. He walks in and finds the doll in a room of the house. The ghost of Mary then comes out to try to scare Jamie, but he throws the doll into the fireplace. Jamie then learns that his dad is nothing more than a life-sized doll. It turns out that Jamie's stepmom was controlling the life-sized doll and was the ghost of Mary Shaw. He then turns around and sees his stepmother who says, Now who's the dummy? At the end of the film, the camera moves over a photo album with each victim, from Lipton to Jamie, turned into puppets with workable mouths. Jamie's voice is heard, saying the rhyme, Beware the stare of Mary Shaw. She had no children, only dolls. And if you see her in your dreams, be sure to never, ever scream. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember to like and subscribe.
and we'll see you next video.